your finances, attack on your house, attack on your children, and you are right there standing. Find somebody that is not afraid to keep quiet. Find somebody that will mentor you from a distance. Find somebody that will mentor you on their knees praying. Find somebody that will water you in the spirit and not in the natural. Find somebody that will disappoint your flesh but bless your spirit! Hey kids, look at all this stuff on the table. It's all buildings and stuff, and like, that reminded me of, uh, Salmon Temple, yeah. Oh no, wait, wait, his name's Solomon, not like the fish salmon. <laughs> King Solomon, I have a question. How did you become such a powerful king when David just started the kingdom? These are purely by the grace of God that was upon my father's life. You know, dads are incredible people. Really? Absolutely. I was over there talking with some friends. Oh yeah? And you know, we were talking about this guy in the Bible called King David. And oh, yeah. he was an incredible father. Yeah, I understand. And he would give instructions on how to build. Jesus says that if you believe in Jesus, then God our Father in Heaven becomes your dad. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a card to God. Yeah. And, and then I'm gonna play catch with God. Well, I don't know how you're gonna play catch with God. I just throw it up in the air and it falls back down. Okay, very good. Verse seven, verse seven, that the trial of your faith How do you know your faith is not theory? How do we know that your faith that is being taught in church is real? There's so many churches. How do you know that your church is real? How do you know that your church, what they're teaching you is not fake? How do you know that all what we are teaching you is real? How do you know? It has to be tested. It has to be tested. The testing of your faith that's what makes your faith real that the enemy will do everything to test your faith and you're still found standing the enemy sends attack after attack after attack after attack attack on your mind attack on your heart attack on your body attack on your finances attack on your house attack on your children and you are right there standing the test of your what look at your neighbor touch two people and tell them your faith must be tested let me explain to you. Because your faith is not of this world. Our faith is not what? Of this world. That is why Nehemiah, when he was attacked, he said, like a, a man like me, can I run away? <laughs> because your faith has to be what? Tested. We need to know what are you made of? Will you be a straw that will burn off when the fire comes? Will you be burnt off when the persecution comes? Will you burn off when trials come, when testing comes? We need to know the test of your faith. Your faith has to be tested. Yeah. Before the word of God can elevate Joseph, the word of God has to test Joseph. 
your elevation in the kingdom of God is directly connected to the testing of your faith. Jesus could not be raised up to the highest of highs until he was tested by going to the lowest of lows. Even in the lowest of lows, he kept his faith faith so the spirit of God raised him up to the highest of highs the reason why some of your destinies has been delayed is because you did not pass your test your faith was tested but it broke you your faith was tested it brought doubt into your heart your faith was tested it brought rejection pain and suffering into your heart. Your faith was tested but the test proved that you were not rooted. Job's wife came to him and looked at this guy. This guy is just silent and saying, I praise God, hallelujah all the time. So she's, she even started instigating rebellion into his heart. Own spouse instigating rebellion in the heart and he's coming and say you know why don't you just curse God and die you know it's one thing when your 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 somebody on internet is telling you to curse God and die but now that person is in your house and that person is your own spouse and the spouse is reflecting the lies of the enemy and he's saying curse God and die that's when your faith is tested your spouse is not rooted but are you Are you rooted? What is your response? What words? When test comes, what words come out of your mouth? That is the testimony of your faith. That's when you hear the man of God say, even if he slay me, I will still praise him. Even if he kills me. He gives and takes away. Blessed be his holy name. And heaven is looking and calling the devil. Did you hear that? It's like the devil is looking at God is proudly looking and telling the devil. Did you hear that? He passed the test. Will you pass the test? Child of God, will you pass the test? This year. (laughs) This year. Why is your faith tested? Because faith is received, right? Okay. You are receiving faith because somebody is talking to you about it. Am I right? What is happening right now? I'm releasing faith into your spirit. What has been? Oh, we've been pumping faith into your heart. <laughs> Today when you go to go back home, demons that are waiting are going to look at you and say, what, what happened to her? She, wa- she went to church all shriveled and, you know, and, and weak and tired. She's coming back with all his muscles bulging. Yeah, eight-pack abs in the spirit. <laughs> Somebody get excited. So now, there is a test of that faith that what you have received is unadulterated in your spirit. It has to be tested. Do you hear me? It has to be tested because now angels are watching. Demons are watching. Angels are watching to elevate you. Demons are saying, no, they should not be elevated. So there is a battle in the heavenly place. Now the word is inside you. Now the word is the one that gives permission for angels to carry you to the next place. So the word is testing you. So the word has to see, is this word real? Does she really believe what she says? Does she really believe it? She's been posting it on Facebook. She's been posting it on Instagram. But does she really believe it? How do we know that? We will only know that if your faith is tested. Many people, it doesn't take 30 seconds to show that all the faith was just theory but not you I said not you, not you, not you You. this is what it says the trial of your faith is more precious than of gold that perishes okay, listen to me it says your trial of not faith not faith, the trial of faith 
One more time. It's not saying that the faith is equal to greater than the perishing gold. No, no, no. That's not what it says. The trial of your faith is more precious than the perishing gold. You don't get extra crowns for the number of demons you have chased. When they were doing all those drama and, and miracles, and they came to Jesus and said, oh, in your name we've cast out demons. Jesus said, relax, guys. Don't be happy that demons listen to you. Be happy that your names are written in the book of life. Wait a minute. Let me explain to you. Meaning unto salvation. <laughs> Meaning, don't be happy that you got salvation. Don't be happy that you have some gifts of the Spirit. Be happy that you have journeyed and you have completed the journey and your name is written in the book of life. The, the worth you have in the spirit realm is not weighed by your exploits. The worth you have in the spirit realm is how much testings you have gone through how many scars you've gone through and you're still found faithful the reward in heaven is not how many times you sang on the platform the reward in heaven is how many times can you be corrected and you're still rooted how many times can you go through pain can you go through rejection? Can you go through sufferings? Can you go through trials? And you're still found standing. Word is coming to you guys. Test is going to follow. Again? One more time. Word has come to you. This week, test will follow. You're going to shine with great colors. Four areas that Joseph was tested. Quickly, write it down. Number one. The Bible says Psalms 105, Joseph was tested, right? He was tested. The word tested him until it was time. Which areas was Joseph tested? And I, I can tell you, 99% of us, we will be tested in that same area. 99%. Number one, he was tested with his father. Number two, he was tested with his brothers. Ooh. Number three, he was tested with strangers. Number four, he was tested with persistence. Four areas of testing. You want me to break it down? Okay. Number one, he was tested with his father. When he came, the word came into his spirit. The Bible says the word was sent and the word tested him. This young man, the Bible is testifying that it was the word that came to him. Am I right? Yes. The word came to him. Now the word is the one that is testing him. So the word comes to his spirit and his visions are now activated and he begins to see and he sees the sun, the moon and the 11 stars coming and bobbing down to He gets so excited. He said, oh, I used to hear that Papa used to see dreams. Now I have received that impartation. Even I am seeing dreams. Let me go to Papa. Oh, I need to tell this to Papa. Papa is going to help me interpret that. Papa is going to, Papa, 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 Papa. Some people are too much Papa. That's a revelation too. Comes running to Papa. Say, Papa, I see this. Papa keeps quiet. Papa doesn't promote him. Papa doesn't use him. Papa doesn't defend his vision. Papa doesn't give him a red carpet welcome. Oh, my young son, he is now a big minister. Come, my son, take the microphone. You are mighty, you are wonderful, you are anointed. Ah! You see, for this young man, for this young minister, for him that vision is so important. For him that vision is like, oh wow, I've never seen something like this. This is the closest to the spirituality of my papa that I've gotten to. But for papa, he's been through valleys. 
he's been through storms he's seen certain angelic dreams and then he's been through valleys he had the mightiest encounter and then entire all his families and wealth had to be taken away he had to stand alone he knows what an encounter costs he knows the price of the anointing he knows the battles it attracts the persecution that it brings so jacob is not excited the son is like oh i'm also doing ministry now oh i'm ready for international website and oh he's designing his logo he's very excited but the father is sitting there saying oh lord now i need to pray more for my son my son is making me work harder in this old age he doesn't know what he's signing up for and the son looks he doesn't get what he expected from his father in fact he gets something from his father which is the most scary thing for any loyal son and what he got from his father was silence i've seen this about sons they don't do well with silence they are skilled in interpreting what they see but they are not skilled in interpreting what they don't see and what they don't hear they are skilled in interpreting spoken words but they are not skilled in interpreting the silence of the father father is quiet what does he mean is he upset is he angry does he believe god is speaking to me does he believe that i have a calling does he support me from the brothers is he not proud of me did i do something was was my offering not enough <laughs> the battles of a loyal son and all what jacob gave is silence because jacob understood something already this dream is going to bring attacks to your life Now if your brother see my hand on your hand hey your attacks are going to be multiplied if i promote you to a position to a chair that you are not ready for that chair will kill you before time so the son looks at it and says maybe my father doesn't love me enough to sit me on the chair that he has been seated oh the son is saying oh oh look at papa he's too attached to the chair oh look at papa he he really like his chair he doesn't want to hand over the chair yeah 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 no my son no my son it's not that we want to hold on to the chair but if i give you this chair now this chair will kill you you have not grown for this chair mantuku balasika pakisirianda the first test of joseph started with his father father keeps quiet now is a test of loyalty will you still stay there or will you go around shopping for a new father <laughs> i'm looking for a father who's always praising me oh son you're wonderful oh you saw a dream oh wow you saw a dream oh you got a prophecy oh he got a pro- no 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 all those people are the most dangerous people yeah. who fill your ego who praise you when you want those are the people you have to run away from those are not the real ones find somebody that is not afraid to keep quiet find somebody that will mentor you from a distance find somebody that will mentor you on their knees praying find somebody that will water you in the spirit and not in the natural find somebody that will disappoint your flesh but bless your spirit you see what joseph doesn't understand the father has 12 sons including joseph 12 but it does not mean that 12 are receiving the same grace of papa 
Because of the 12, Mene Larianta Brocosia, there's only one guy that is the closest to Papa. There's only one guy, his heart, his soul, because he was the youngest born. So the youngest born is always sticking to Baba. He's always, you know, holding the pants of the Baba and just, just sticking, sticking, sticking. Everybody is like, I know what to do. I'm a teenager. I'm an adult. Da, 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 da. They're figuring things out. But this one, this one is just hugging Papa all the time. Hey, there is a, a principle in the Bible. When the oil flows on Aaron, it flows down from his head. It flows down to his beard. And it flows down to his clothes. And it flows down all the way to his toes. Anything in that line gets the oil. It's a secret I'm giving you. Find somebody in a church that is so aligned. They are not going and listening to 200 sermons and saying, which sermon is better today? No, no, no. They know where their voice of God is for this week. They know where they are planted. They know where their mana is. They may not even understand everything, but they are committed to decode the location they are in. They are committed to understand the prophet that was sent to them. They are committed to understand the raven that carries their food. Something happens with that kind of an alignment with that kind of a commitment they're not just committed with their presence they're committed with their finances they're not just watching they are investing into the television they're part of that ministry they are hands-on they are not standing at a distance and watching the ministry they're part of it you know who is the most dangerous person on your ship the one that is sleeping when there is a storm on the outside this Jonah was sleeping under the ground floor of the ship. Everybody is trying to rescue the ship, but Jonah is sleeping. That guy is the reason why the storm is on you. The sleeping guy is the responsible one. Because if it is Jesus, he's going to rise up and bring peace into your storm. But if it is Jonah, the only way to stop the storm is if you throw him and feed him to the fish. When God looked at Jacob, he said, there's a grace already. And I'm finding one person that will hug you the most. Jacob had a grace to dream. Without him have to do an impartation session. Just the favor that Joseph found in the eyes of Jacob caused an anointing that was on Jacob's life to go to Joseph. Just the favor. He said, I like this kid. I'm going to buy him a jacket. He put that jacket in the natural, but that jacket was a spiritual impartation of grace. These words are covering you. These words are rooting you. These words are fueling you to go the long distance. Somebody shout, I am covered. Open your mouth as loud as you can and say, I am covered. Now the oil is on him. Now people doesn't know about it, but he's anointed. The grace that was on Papa to dream is now on him. Oh, Brother Nick, they throw him into the jail. You've been there, you know what it is. They throw him in the jail. Now everybody in the jail is dreaming things. They didn't dream before, but the moment Joseph entered the jail, the only dream they saw was about dreaming about some, him eating cake. But now the moment Joseph entered the location, now they started seeing dreams that were significant. Now it's no more dreams of fantasy. Now he's dreaming things that is of the spirit. They're dreaming things of an another realm because somebody that is carrying the realm is in your vicinity and you can just be just by appreciating him, just by being nice to him, you start tapping into that grace. Do you understand why? Almost all the time, 99% time, the enemy will always make you attack the one sent for you. Because if you can attack the anointing that was sent for you, you will, not re you will not receive from that anointing. You can sit in a service, you can do everything, but you will not receive from the anointing that you speak against. So the enemy traps believers in situations 
where the enemy has influenced their friends to come together and gossip and attack the house that is supposed to bring them into a blessing. Now, the anointed one in their vicinity, but they are not able to tap into the gift. Because to tap into the gift of that grace of God, what you celebrate is what will begin to manifest in your life. The gift on Joseph rested so strong that even the king of Egypt began to see dreams. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? From the top level of the society to the bottom. Hey, so you have to ask your question. What is going on with Joseph? What is going on? Joseph, what's happening to you? Everywhere people are seeing dreams, wherever you go. Now even the king of Egypt apparently is seeing dreams. What's happening, Joseph? Huh. Joseph will tell you, every day has been a test. It's not that I prayed for three hours. It's not that I prayed for five hours. It's not that my fasting is better now. But it's that it has been a long season of testing. And my anointing is becoming greater and greater. Hear me? Hear me, before, in order for you to catch my anointing, you had to be five feet away from me. But I have been so tested. Now my faith is shining, shining more brighter than the gold that now everybody in the prison is under the, 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 the velocity of my anointing. I have been tested for two and a half years. I've been saturated. My faith has been tested so long that the tentacles of my faith is now reaching all the way into the prime minister's office the more your word is tested the more your anointings influence will begin to increase And you're thinking, if I can get Papa to lay hands on me 10 times, if I can get Papa to pour the oil on me, oh, Papa didn't do that. Papa didn't say that. Papa didn't come home. Papa didn't shake hands with me. Papa didn't eat with me. Stop it. Childishness. Learn to understand. The way you deal with the biological father is not how you deal with the spiritual father. Jacob was no more a biological father. He was functioning as a man that had wrestled with an angel. Now he stands in that authority and he's releasing things into the spirit. Joseph, will you pass the test? Will you pass the test? I release this grace right where you are. Your testimony is going to be different. Your authority level is going to be different. This is again is coming repeatedly into my spirit that your weight in the spirit is increased after today. 